In today's video, we're gonna weave a beachy ocean landscape. So let's get started. I know that I wanna use this piece of driftwood to hang this weaving from, so I'm gonna make sure that my warp sits within that size. For the warp, I'm using linen warp string because I feel like this just gives such beachy vibes. Basically, all I'm gonna do is lay this piece of driftwood here and decide where I want the weaving to go to in terms of edge to edge. Now, the main part of the driftwood is here, so I think I wanna stay within that. So I might start my warp right about here and then figure out how wide I want it as I go. Since I'm going to be using some chunking materials, I decided just to warp this as a single warp, which just means there's one string between each notch. To me, this looks like about the perfect width for this piece, so I'm gonna start my warp here. I'm really excited to weave this piece, but before we do that, we need to create a solid base for our piece. So I started this weaving how I like to start every weaving, which is with a nice big piece of cardstock at the bottom, just woven in with plain weave, followed by a twining stitch and two rows of plain weave using a super bulky yarn. For the fringe, I used this book to wrap my fringe around to get me the size that I wanted, and I used five millimeter and three millimeter cotton string, and then I used one strand of each size to create my groupings of fringe. Now we're ready to get started with weaving. I'm gonna use this three millimeter cotton string. For the foreground, we're gonna create a grassy texture at the bottom using a Giord's knot. And all of this knot is, is basically a Raya knot that you don't have to cut individual strings for. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. We're working around two warp strings at a time. And I have the other strand that I'm using in my hand. I'm gonna take the right string and wrap it from the left around. Then I'm going over to the left string and going around and through the middle. Then from there, we can sort of adjust that knot to get this the length we want it, but we can always cut it later. After you have that knot in, you can just cut off the extra. Then we're working on the next two warp strings. So I'm gonna take the right one and I'm going between the two warp strings and underneath the right string, then over top both strings and around and through the middle on the left. And then again, we can adjust this to be the length that we want it and tighten it up. I'm just gonna continue that all the way across my loom. Now that we have one row of the Giord's knots, I'm going to take this beige cotton yarn. All the tools and materials will be linked in the description. And I'm gonna do a couple of rows of plain weave just to lock this in. Since the yarn I'm using to lock in those Giord's knots is quite thin, I went with a total of four rows of plain weave. Now I'm simply just gonna repeat that same thing again. I'm doing the Giord's knots followed by plain weave. Okay, so our sort of grassy texture is done now. I did a total of three rows. So we're ready to move on with what's going to be our sand. I haven't locked these Giord's knots in here, but I don't really want the look of the plain weave between there now. I'm gonna use this instead. So this is basically just ripped up cotton fabric. It's recycled and I love it. This is going to give the sand section a nice organic feel. Now for this section, I'm going to be weaving over two under two. So it's plain weave, but it's just a little bit more spread out. I really like the way that this particular yarn, fabric, whatever you wanna call it, it has its own texture. So even when you're just weaving plain weave, it gives a really organic textured look. So now I have a number of rows woven in with that over two, under two plain weave. And I kind of want to give this a more organic shape. So since this was woven a little bit loosely, I can sort of manipulate this to give it a little bit more of a curvy feel than just having it straight across. So I'm just sort of pushing down in some areas and letting this loosen up on the edges. So it's just giving us a little bit of that wavy feel. So now we wanna start creating our water. I have a few different colors of blue and I'm gonna use them from dark to light. So I have two different colors of merino wool roving and two different colors of recycled silk chiffon ribbon. So I'm gonna start with this silk chiffon ribbon since it is the darkest color that I have. And we wanna start creating a bit of a wavy shape into this piece. 
I love that this has a bit of a shine to it, so it's going to really give it a bit of a watery effect. I'm gonna take a nice long piece to start with, two and a little bit arm's length. Then I'm going to fold this over and we're going to create a sumac stitch, but it's a double sumac stitch at the same time. So we've got it folded over. I'm taking the looped side in my left hand. I'm gonna open up that loop and I'm going to take this excess and feed it down underneath the first two warp strings. We're gonna pull that all the way through and then we're just gonna pull this loop all the way to the end like this. Then we can do that again. We're gonna open up the two strands, move on to the next two warp strings and then feed all of this ribbon through. And you're gonna start to see that braid effect coming in now. I'm gonna keep an eye on my warp strings to make sure that they're not twisting on me. So I'm gonna untwist them if they do. So now I've reached the end of the piece and I want to turn around. So I'm just flipping all of this over to the other side and I am gonna go on the first two warp strings and now we're working in the opposite direction. So I'm going to take these first two warp strings and now I'm feeding from the left to the right. I'm gonna tighten those up so that we're turned around and then I can simply just start working my way across again. Now that I've got two rows in of that, I'm gonna cut off some of this excess and we'll tuck that in later. And now we're gonna move on to using the merino wool roving. So for this section, I'm once again going to be weaving in over two, under two. We're gonna go all the way across with that. And this time though, we wanna create some little bubbles to give this some more texture. So starting from, since my tail is on this end, I'm gonna just start pulling from the right these little bubbles. We can even shift things around a bit to sort of emphasize those waves that we are trying to go for. And then I'm gonna do that again. So I'm going to go over two, under two, all the way across. So then with this end, since it ended going under, I'm gonna actually loop that back around again to tuck it in later. And then this one will also be looping around the edge for us to tuck in after. Next, I'm moving on to another recycled silk chiffon and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did down here, but with this color now. So once again, I'm going to take about two and a half arms lengths, fold it in half and do that double sumac stitch. Since I still have quite a bit of this ribbon, I'm gonna see if I can go across one more time just to make it a little bit different than the previous section. Now I'm gonna move on to this lighter blue merino roving and I wanna do the same bubbly effect as the other color of merino. So I'm weaving in over two, under two and then creating those little bubbly loops. To finish off these waves, I am using this same kind of recycled cotton as I did in the sand in a lighter blue. I'm just gonna weave this in with the over two, under two plain weave. I wove that in for a total of four rows and now we're ready to get started with the sky. For the sky, I'm just going to be doing regular old plain weave that over one, under one. With this super bulky yarn, the same yarn I used to start the base of this piece. To finish off the top of the piece, I'm just doing a, another twining stitch just like we did at the very bottom. This time though, I did grab a new piece to do that twining stitch because if you turn around with your yarn to do the twining stitch, it tends to suck in the sides of your piece. Then I decided this piece needed a sun, so I cut out a semi-circle with some yellow felt that I had, and I'm gonna needle felt over this to give it a more organic texture. Then I'm gonna use my multi-needle felting tool and a bit of this beautiful yellow roving. I'm gonna just take off a little bit of a piece, and then I wanna spread it across that semi-circle, and I'm going to use that semi-circle as a guide to where to felt. So I'm gonna start out in the middle and we're just going in and out into that felting pad behind. When you use multiple needles at once, you do need to be a little bit more gentle because these needles can break pretty easily. I'm 
Now I can see that I'm not fully covering my piece of felt. So I'm going to be adding a little bit more wool yet on top of this, but I just kind of want to get the base down first. I'm going to take a little bit more wool to go on top of this. I really want to make sure I'm covering the edges of my felt that I had underneath. So just to give you a view of what it looks like on the back of a needle felted thing, it almost is just like fuzzy, like Velcro. And we've basically just knotted those wool hairs into the piece. I'm gonna tuck in some of the ends because if I don't, I'm probably gonna have a hard time weaving them in later. So I'm just grabbing a yarn needle and I'm going to tuck in the ends in the back. Now we're gonna work on the grass to make it look a little less chaotic. I'm gonna take a little rope brush, which is similar to a cat brush, so use what you've got or a comb, and I'm just gonna brush out all that string at the bottom. I wanna try to brush it so it's sticking pretty much straight out, and then we're gonna trim this to a better length for grass. Then I'm simply, I'm gonna hold my piece kind of like this, so it's kind of vertical. And the reason for that is I wanna to try to avoid getting all the little green specks I'm about to cut off onto the fringe below. So I'm just gonna tip it over and I'm gonna just carefully trim some and then we're gonna look at it before we go too far. So what I'm doing is sort of just floofing it out and seeing where it wants to lay. So it's kind of a mixture between grass or like shrubs. And I think I wanna clean up this part and it's gonna get a little bit messy, but I'm just gonna try to take off those little bits that I'm cutting off. I'm gonna try to take them as I'm cutting so it doesn't get too messy. I decided to add these little birds using some dark brown merino wool roving and just needle felting them into that classic M bird shape. I think the dark brown worked really well for this and now we're ready to take this off the loom. And I'm gonna work on the bottom first. So I'm flipping all of my fringe over. I'm gonna take the cardstock off the bottom and then I'm gonna slip these loops off. Since this is the end we started the warp on, I have one loop and then this additional string. And I'm just gonna do an overhand knot. This is the most secure knot. And then after that, I can just take one loop at a time until I reach the end. Now that all those knots are secure, I can slip the piece off the loom and we can work on the top. So I'm gonna be finishing this piece off a little differently than you've seen from me before. I'm gonna start with overhand knots at the top making sure I'm not changing the line at the top since we made it straight before we took it off the loom. Okay, so that's all secure now. So now we can go back to the bottom and we can tuck in these ends. Now we're ready to finish off the very top of this piece. I'm going to cut these ends nice and short. Since I did those overhand knots, I know that that's gonna stay secure. And then I'm gonna bring out my driftwood again and just really figure out exactly where I want that to sit. So I'm gonna grab my hot glue gun and I'm actually gonna glue this to the driftwood because I want it to stay really clean. And I'm gonna put a line across the entire top of my weaving. And then I'm just gonna take my driftwood position it and press it in place. And then I'm gonna clean up all those little spider webby hairs that tend to happen when you're using hot glue and make sure those aren't visible, which will then make it look like I didn't use hot glue at all. While I am happy with how clean this looks back here, I am gonna add a little piece of this leather just to cover up the knots from the weaving. And now I'm just making sure my little piece of leather is really straight. So I just wanna cover up all those knots. I'm gonna place this nice and straight. So 
So that just gives me a little bit of a cleaner finish here at the back. And now I'm ready to add a hanging string. We're almost ready to look at this final piece, but before we do that, I'm gonna make sure that the fringe is a little bit more even at the bottom. It's all finished and we're ready to look at the final piece. I love the way that this one turned out and if you enjoyed this landscape weaving, check out this one next.